Okay, so the International Tournament of Towns is on the 4th of November 2023 for O level. And it's two weeks later for A level. And what what I want and what I want to talk about are the things I've noticed over the years, um, especially for students doing it for the first time. So some things that you could do to prepare for the first time that could really enhance your experience, especially in educationally. And that that'll save you kind of having to sort of adjust over the years. And I find that you might even be able to approach your first or second tournament like someone who's done five tournaments but haven't really realized these things. So, um, okay, there's a lot of details about the tournament that are actually also in the sign-up form, so I'm not going to repeat those. Um, you can kind of hopefully digest them as you sign up. Um, but So I want to tell you what is the Tournament of Towns, and then I kind of want to tell you um, what you can do to prepare for your first time doing the Tournament of Towns. Okay, so the first... The first thing is the tournament town is an international tournament. Okay, so the the problems are made. Um, so the problems are made by a central organizing committee in Moscow, and the the towns refers to all the cities around the world that that host the same problems locally on behalf of the organizers. Okay, so I'm responsible. Or Dr. Michael Sun School of Maths is responsible for the towns in Australia, so the cities in Australia and New Zealand. And right now, so the main the main places we've got it set up is in New South Wales and in Western Australia. But um, this year we've added Victoria and hopefully in the future um, we can add the other states and territories in person, but right now it's, the others are online. And in, in the past, I've tried to reach out to them, but I haven't had much success. So I'm kind of just gradually expanding from, from, some, from sort of the main the main cities. Um, yeah, and the problems are great. So the people don't realize, like they think every every math problem is the same. And says like you get a test, you do the math problems. It's not quite like that, okay? So some problems... Just kind of like like some stories, like the books that you read. Some stories really capture the imagination, and other stories kind of just like, I don't really get the point. Why did you tell me this? The one of the towns questions are like the the really imaginative stories. Okay, they bring out, they might they they hopefully bring out the mathematician in you. Okay, and then and you might really discover your calling in life. Maybe it, it is mathematics, and one of the towns is a really good way. Um, and it's a very beginner-friendly way, so it looks very difficult, and it, and it is very difficult, but it's not difficult in the same way like certain other math competition problems are difficult, especially at the beginning level. It doesn't really assume, like the difficulty doesn't come from the assumed knowledge, at least not as much. Okay, the difficulty comes from sort of the ins the inspiration or the spark that might be needed to to overcome the the obstacle in the problem. So. So it's a very exciting way to begin your journey in mathematics. Okay, so for the O-level paper, there are five problems. You could, you could, you can see it in the short that maybe led you to this. Um, five problems, and you get to pick three of them. So your best three scores count. And there's a lot of so I think especially for the first time, you don't really want to focus too much on the score, um, because I think the score might really distract you from your progress. I think only really. Um, year tens, year nines, maybe um, are really in you know, a position to care about score, and the others are kind of just um, trying to learn. So if you take into account the score multiplier, you might lose a lot of learning opportunities because, like for example, in year seven, your score gets multiplied by two. So then you actually have the chance to get the highest score. But but I think you should be aiming sort of um, not to get the highest score absolutely, but to sort of maybe get the same as a a good year 10 score with the multiplier so just doing like half the problems okay okay so now we're really getting into the advice for beginners um so the, the only have to do so it's best three problems and and the general gist is i think you should attempt fewer problems okay so a lot of people like they go in and they kind of get like one mark on all five problems and you know that'll get you it's usually get you five but in this competition you get three points and 
you know, the first, solving the first question also gets you three points. So in your mind, you might think that's equivalent, um, but it's really not. Okay. So I think if you solve one question, you can, you have something to build on. Yeah. So a lot of this educational advice, I don't have really time to do in the tournament because the tournament um, has a lot of sort of requirements that you have to meet before you get to education. It's not quite, it's, it's first the examination, then it's education. So I'm trying to give you education so that um, you don't waste time doing the tournament. Um, so don't don't attempt a lot of questions. And, and there's a, it's a five hour time limit or four hours um, practically, but you have five hours if you need it. <clears throat> and it seems like a lot to spend on one question, but I think that's really where the, the experience comes from in the struggle to solve that one question. And when you get it, um, that's success you can really build on. Okay, so the first time you do the tournament, your goal should be to solve basically question one. You can ignore the other questions um, instead of kind of dilly dabbling everywhere. I mean, when you but when you have solved question one, then you can try and solve question two. Okay, I think you get a lot more out of the exam that way. Yeah. So and then what, what what does it mean to actually solve the problem? Okay. So a lot of people, especially the young students, they don't really understand that this is a proof writing contest. So if you just write an answer, like it was a yes or no question, you write yes or no. That that's worth no points. Okay. So it's 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 not about whether you think it's yes or no. It's more about whether like everyone's sure the answer is yes. You know, like you have to make someone believe that you you. You you have a, you you've arrived at the answer yes with absolute certainty, so that's usually called a proof. But I mean, there's lots of other ways to do it. So um, you know, there's, there's a big transition between just informal arguments and, and a formal proof. But but the same idea, the the idea of rigor, the idea of sort of certainty, is 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 uh, prominent in all of it. So you're trying to you're trying to know for sure what the answer is. And how you know for sure, or how and how the marker knows for sure, um, you know, if you can convince the marker that you know for sure by telling them how you knew, then that's essentially writing a proof. Okay, and so and that's why like there's so much time given you. You you don't just have time to solve the problem, which depending on the problem could take a long time or not that long. And no matter that, there's always a certain amount of chunk of time dedicated to actually writing the proof. So even for the easy problem, okay. And you know, while while it's a necessary skill and not like I don't think it's something worth emphasizing, it it does become worth emphasizing when it's missing from people's understanding of of this interaction. Okay. Okay. So don't try too many problems. Um, you need to write a proof or try to write a proof for the problems that you do solve. Okay. And then some just kind of basic things like, like new pages for each question, write your name on each page and write in pen. There's no calculators. Um, there's actually, you can bring your own food to the exam. Okay. Um, so in New South Wales, we actually order pizza. So if you want to buy order pizza, you have to, it's like, you pay pay for the pizza. There's a pizza form, but um, if you don't want to do that, you can just bring your own food. I think at the venue there's usually like some boiling water sauce, so you can probably bring like cup noodles. So that's probably like you know the most the cheapest kind of way to bring hot food. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of little minor details like that. Um, they should be aware of so no calculators you can and generally you're allowed a like a ruler and a and a compass and write in a pen and don't write on the back of the sheet of the paper so you usually get a four sheets of paper um don't write on the back it's going to get missed um it's usually going to be scanned and sent to the um central organizing committee and the local marking committee so if it's in pencil, a lot of it might get lost in the scan. And if it's on the other side, it might not even be scanned. Um, and I guess if you bring your phone with a scanning app, which is what I'm encouraging in New South Wales, is you also get you get a record of your own exam, which is something that's pretty good without me having to send it to you. And you can review 
So in terms of an exam, like the educational value from the exam comes from feedback. So if you just do it and you never get feedback, you basically, uh, you're doing it just for the results, which is some sort of feedback, but you might not even get your results. So, um, so it's good to look at the questions and see how you did it and try to think about um, what you can do better. Um, and, you know, we, we do that in some of the classes. Um, but sometimes if you don't write anything for the answer, there's no, you can't really give any feedback, right? Someone literally doesn't write anything, writes and yes. So you just write a zero and you give it back to them. And this is the point of kind of this video is to avoid stuff like that. Okay, so, okay, so you, you basically know what to try to do in the exam and the equipment and stuff that allow you to do the exam. You know, there should be like a clock, keep track of the time. Um, what else is there? There is, yeah, so what is the feedback? Yeah, so try to find the solutions. So like yourself after the exam, keep going, um, you know, discuss the exam. And, and what's the deadline for getting feedback? Well, it's basically before you do the next exam, right? Because if you haven't got the feedback on the first one, what's the point of doing the next one? So the A-level is two weeks after the O-level, and it's a much harder exam. And usually only only certain people are invited to the second one. And the first one is open to everyone. Um, and you you really want to get some feedback before the next, next one starts. Okay. Um, and so that might just be you looking over your own answers and thinking about them. It might be someone giving you the results and your ranks and all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, what else? Yeah, so the, the timing of the exam, I guess. So in, in South Wales, I'm trying to give like an early session and a late session, just try to make as many people can join as possible. But, um, got, so the timing is meant to be like four hours, but it could actually be longer or shorter depending on basically your age. I mean, like you got to have realistic expectations. Like if you're in year like six or seven, like if the exam time was two hours, it probably wouldn't make as that much of a difference. Um, just because a lot of students that age cannot really function past two hours anyway. And um, so there's no point making the exam five hours for them. Um, but you know, for like year 12 students, the, the, the five hours is maybe a welcome addition to the time and they can really think about things more deeply. Um, yeah. Um, is there anything else? I, can, I mean, I think I've covered the main thing. So if you have any more questions, just uh, maybe leave a comment and I'll try to answer you as best I can um, and subscribe for, for more updates on the tournament and also the updates also be posted on the tournament website drmichaelson.com.au and it's like one of the links on the, on the top um, and the, the RSVP form to sign up for the tournament is also there okay so I hope to see you all at the tournament um, yeah